getting started into this Silicon Valley bank thing. Like, I don't watch the news. So like, can you explain to people what you know? The most oversimplified explanation is that Silicon Valley Bank kind of experienced the classic run on the bank. So people started getting afraid due to some actions that were occurring at the bank. So they all went to withdraw their money and banks don't keep everybody's money in the vault. So when everybody when everybody started withdrawing their money, it quickly led to their collapse. I think in as little as 48 hours that happened. Yeah. And like I talked to our financial guy and he said the, the interesting thing about that bank is that they had a ton of startups in there. They had a ton of crypto people in there. And so when crypto, which has not been doing the greatest for the past year or so, those people needed money. And so when they needed money, they went in and they withdrew money. And when they kept withdrawing and withdrawing money, the bank ran out of the money. Yeah, so one of the key reasons for the distress was that Silicon Valley Bank, unsurprisingly in Silicon Valley, had high number of startups as their customer base. I got a call, I guess, what, the collapse happened on Friday. I and mean, then... Saturday morning. We have a lot of local banking relationships. That's kind of the, the thing in real estate is you, you need the local banking relationships. So Cliff Harbor, or <laughs> Cliff Harbor, Cliff Honeycutt at Blue Harbor Bank called me on Sunday to explain that, you know, a lot of the local banks were meeting all weekend because until the news on Monday that all of the depositors at Silicon Valley Bank would be made whole, everyone was very fearful that they needed to pull out anything over $250,000 in the accounts and move them, move the money elsewhere. Well, what's so, up with this $250,000 number for people that don't quite that's get That's the it? amount that is insured. So your insured deposits, if your bank fails and you have um, $250,000 and $1 in the bank, then the $250,000 is insured. You will be made whole on that. And the $1, it's anybody's guess whether you will. So that left a lot of uncertainty and, you know, people potentially making moves to go to these all, all these other banks and start withdrawing their money, which could have led to like national banking failures. Uh, but a lot of these local banks are meeting on the weekend to say, all right, one, let's talk about our financial position. How do we help our customers understand um, that we are financially sound? And then they started calling people. And um, I got a call from Cliff Honeycutt and he was explaining that they're very diversified, unlike how Silicon Valley Bank was. You know, a lot of their business was in tech and startups, whereas, you know, the, these local banks, they're very diversified in their branches of business. And he said, we could have, you know, multiple of these uh, sectors of ours fail and still be fine. It definitely has made things interesting it, from closings because we have had some buyers be affected by this. Hmm. So their money was tied up in Silicon Valley Bank. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, for example, there was a closing last week where the buyer's funds were deposited with Silicon Valley Bank. They're supposed to close, I think it was Thursday. The money wasn't going to be available on Thursday. They were going to be made whole. They were going to receive their funds, but not on that date. So then it affects, okay, well, did their rate, was their rate lock going to expire with their loan? Were they going to be in breach of contract for failing to close on time? And then also people um, sending their funds to us. You know, most closings these days, unfortunately, it's, it's over $250,000. So, you know, they're sending funds and wanting to know, all right, what's the deal with this bank I'm sending it to? Are they strong? Are they going to collapse? Or, you know, so we fielded calls from clients who wanted to know more information about their options for sending their funds. But, you know, it's just something that we're having to deal with until everybody kind of feels secure and settled here. And in real estate, it's, you know, if you read the Good Fund Settlement Act, we have to have all of the funds in our trust account to be able to disperse. It is really not feasible to have an infinite number of trust accounts that each hold $250,000 that we cobble together for each closing. I feel like that would be a nightmare <laughs> to deal with. And I, I, I don't even so. know if the statute would allow it. I'd have to go back and read it. But even if it did, I, I don't think it would be taken kindly to with the the trust accounting people at the bar. So um, it just, it's, un it's unfortunate. We're dealing with it and we're moving forward, hopefully. <laughs>